My guys, I've been promising this video for quite a while now, and so here we are. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. This is a rare pre-con video about the 2023 pool priority in the form of a tier list. However, tier list, they never tell the full story. And so here is the accompanying video because I'm sure that you're going to see this uh, this bad boy right here. You're going to be like, oh man, these guys, these C tiers are all freaking trash. Well, that's not entirely true. And that is why there is a video here so I can capture my thoughts. So very important thing to note is that this is not a reroll priority tier list. There are other resources from like your girl Nyara who have done something like that and depending on when you start the game especially for like these ranks it is going to be not really reflective so for example if you started when like princess pecorin or when uh christmas saren comes out they are going to be extremely good for your team they are gonna pretty much act as your s tiers and so yeah just remember even though they're not like s or a tiers like some of the characters you pull are in the b or c tier they are more than usable it's just that this is in terms of okay let's use our gems most efficiently we pull for these ones the other thing that i do want to mention is that this this is going to be in the context of no UE. And so why that is really important is because some characters such as your Inori over here, Inori as well as your Ranger Rin as well as your Angel Yori, they get really really good with their UEs. However, I'm going to try to not recommend them now because by the time they're actually good when the UEs come out, you'll be hopefully, well all of us will be in the 200 spark mode in which our spark is going to be, or our pity, whatever you want to call it, it will be reduced from 300 to 200 however if there is a character that you really really like i know there are a lot of you chiru fans or a lot of you like uh, angel yori fans then just go roll for them because it's probably going to be about a year before we actually see that change all right with that being said let's get into the tier list itself and starting off with your girl niaru over here so if you guys are not pulling for niaru that is a big mistake you should be pulling for this cat the reason being is that she is a powerhouse not only in cb but in luna tower in your dungeon ex3 in your main story you can use her anywhere she is literally just the strongest mage however by the time this video has dropped hopefully you have either seen me pity her or pitied her yourself so let's move on to Labi over here, who we all know as one of the Seven Crowns units. She is certainly going to be a prefaz unit on launch. So she's probably about like six to eight months away from this video. And the TLDR for her is that she is an incredible physical support. She gives physical attack, physical crit rate up, physical crit damage up, action speed up, and physical defense down on the enemies as well. And on top of that, she actually has two forms, which is similar to Muimi. So when she UBs, she goes into a different loop. And then when it expires, she goes back into the same one. All in all, she's used in essentially all content, pushing Luna Tower, pushing your story, CB Arena, so she is certainly a must pull. Moving along, we have the Kokoro next, the Princess Kokoro. Now, it's essentially Kokoro, but she's a princess now. <laughs> Top tier all around support that not only heals, but she also boosts your TP fill rate, uh, all crit damage, all attack, and lowers all defense of enemies. So what this means is that she's gonna fit into every team. Labi, the one that we just talked about before, she is very much a physical support. Kokoro, Princess Kokoro, she can go anywhere. And so it's for these reasons that she is a must pull, another prefaz character. And then lastly, in the S rank, we've got New Year's Nanika over here. And I'm sure a lot of you were really surprised by like how broken normal Nanika was. Well, here we go again. What exactly she does is she is essentially a fantastic magic buffer. So she buffs magic attack, magic crit rate, magic crit damage, and TP fill rate as well. And on top of that, I think she actually has a single target heal. And so similar to the other two, you can take her into all sorts of content. However, similar to Labi, she is magic focused or rather similar, but not similar. Y you get what I mean. However, comparing her to all of the other priorities or the higher priorities, she's probably coming like as one of the last ones considering I believe she is coming as the next New Year's character. So that's pretty much a whole year away. But speaking of New Year's characters, next we have the New Year's Kokoro over here. Now, she is pretty debated in which some people are like oh she's an s tier must pull some people are like oh she's an a tier she's good but she's not like used like every everywhere me personally as you can see i would argue that she is more of an a tier character because personally i think like whilst she is really good she's not like as good as the three up here right and so why she is so good is because she is a physical tank but on top of that she supports with heals and has a slow taunt but the real value in her is that she giga juices one particular unit in the physical aspect with 
a massive physical crit damage buff of plus 30%. And so as you can tell from her kit, you could take her to a lot of places and she definitely sees some use in CB, but certainly not as much as like your Labi or your Princess Kokoro over here, which is why I rate her more as an A. Next, we've got the Princess Yui over here. Now she's an interesting one because she's an AOE magical attacker with some really, really crazy offensive buffs. She's got massive magical attack buff, magic crit buff, and magic crit damage buff. However, I believe all of this is for herself. But the crazy thing about these buffs is that they all stack and they last for the duration of the entire battle. And since she's an AOE based magical attacker, you'll definitely find her predominantly on like your multi-target CBs as well as your arenas. So I definitely was using her for arena attack when I was still playing the JP server. Moving on, next we've got the Princess Hiyori over here. Now, she, a lot of people thought she was going to be like a god tier similar to New Year's Kiaru because she had some like similar stacking mechanism, but she's not quite that strong. She is really, really good. However, she is a very good selfish attacker, not quite different from like your Princess Yui just as we talked about. And so as a physical attacker, single target, she is generally seen in your clan battles as well as your PvE. I remember when I was playing JP, I would borrow a friend's Princess Hiyori and use her to just push through the story all the way to you know very far places that I shouldn't have been and then moving on to the next character we have uni over here now uni's cute you know she's fantastic she's cute she is she is the epitome of a buffer is probably the best way to describe her where she actually gives up all of her own personal damage to juice up everybody else and so she massively buffs uh, physical attack as well as physical crit rates and tp regen and she also gives a negation barrier so not an absorption barrier however all of this is at the cost of her own stats which is okay considering she's essentially like reducing herself from like 100 percent efficiency down to like you know like five percent but the rest of her team is getting juiced up with all of that but she is still a permanent character you see there is no l or c over here l being limited and so therefore you could theoretically skip her and for some people i know that would bump her from a priority pool down to like potentially a b or even lower but from a meta point of view she is very strong. And so speaking of the L or the C, we have the C over here and C stands for collaboration because Uzuki over here from your idol master, she is gonna be our collab unit. Similar to our Rem, Amelia, Ram, she is gonna be joining us from another universe. Now, what exactly does she do? The TLDR is that she is Jita with the Jita's UE, so like the whole uh, TP boosting for the whole team kind of thing. But instead of using single target attacks, she actually uses AOE. And so what that means is that she would be good in your multi-target bosses in CB, but considering Jita like kind of has the same effect with the team wide TP boost kind of shtick, and with her also being a farmable unit, you could honestly skip Uzuki, which is a shame. However, if you do like the Uzuki, you do like the Idol Master, kind of IP, then you could certainly roll for her now. Generally speaking, she is going to get a rerun, but this rerun might be quite a while away. And then lastly, on the A tier, we have the Magical Girl, Kasumi. Now, the only reason that she is not in the S tier is because she is only dominating, like utterly, utterly dominating in the PvP scene. Yes, there are some niche cases in which she is used in CB. However, those are not exactly common. And so it's only for that reason that Magical Girl, Kasumi is down sitting in the A. Honestly, if you're a PvP player, she is probably probably the must pull unit of the entire year. But from an overall standpoint, and considering she is also permanent, yeah, she's gonna sit in an A for now. All right, let's move on to the B tier units, starting off with Princess Pekka. Now, honestly, this one surprised me because I thought Princess Pekka was pretty good. However, the rationale as to why she's sitting here kind of makes sense. And so the TLDR of the princess version of your hungry heroine is that she's essentially a Pekkerin that does a bunch of damage with a bunch of different effects, which are dependent on her current HP. If her HP is above 50%, then do this. If it's below 50%, then trigger some kind of like survival effects such as death prevention and so honestly in a nutshell she is like a really extremely solid standalone unit she's good at everything but if you have everybody else then she would be passed over so for example if you're building teams for like clan battle and you have like makoto uh s makoto you've got your pikokoro and all of them you would rather use them than your pekarin however 
if you do have the Princess Pecorin and you don't have all of these other units, then she is actually quite a good stand-in. Similar kind of thing for Arena. I've seen her on uh, Defense Arena. I've seen her on Attack. I think the best way of putting her is that she is the ultimate cope unit in which she'll do well in a lot of places, but she's not going to be your best pick for any of them. And so it's for these reasons that if you were a new player and you picked up the Princess Pecco, she would be extremely, extremely valuable. But for more of us older players, not quite as much. And so skipping past the Rin over here, I'm going to talk quickly about the Christmas Saren because she is essentially in the same spot. She is a tank with a bunch of different buffs. I believe she buffs both physical and magical attack as well as their defenses, maybe? I can't quite remember. But on top of that, she also has an on-demand block on her UB. So if a boss does like a really big slow attack, like only one hit, you can use Christmas Saren to almost negate and reflect it if I remember correctly. However, she is kind of like in the same scenario as a Princess Pecorin, where if you do have some of the other units that are better, then they will probably be used over her, except for I think a Goblin Bro. There's a particular Goblin in which uh, Summer, no sorry, Christmas Saren is better for. All right, with that said, let's come back to Rin over here. Now she is the second character from the Idol Master collab. So she is TLDR, I believe, a negating tank where she tanks with a negation barrier. So remember, there are two types of barriers, absorption and negation. Negation means that nothing happens, like you don't take the damage, whereas absorption means you actually are able to heal off of it. And on top of this negation barrier, she also has a slow taunt because it's the second skill in her action, as well as a bind, which is essentially kind of like your, uh, your Nozomi does the AoE hit and uh, everybody gets stunned. Rin kind of does that too. However, when I phrase it like that, then you can kind of see why she is sitting in the B tier, right? Because there are unfortunately a lot of other units who could replace her job. And then rounding out the B tiers, we have the Sama Ruka over here, who is a fantastic AOE physical attacker in which her kit has little to, I'm pretty sure she has zero utility. And so therefore she is definitely predominantly used for multi-target CB bosses. Yes, no utility, lots of damage, uh, AOE, Therefore, multi-target clan battle bosses. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a fantastic character, and some of the T10 clans might be like, oh, you gotta you gotta pull for the Summer Ruka because um we've got to maintain our T10. But for the vast majority of us, she is decent. And so my guys, that is going to bring us to the end of like kind of the B tier list. There aren't too many characters from here who I want to talk about. Uh maybe your Halloween Tsumuki. She is a good physical tank with a taunt, but especially with the meta that we're moving towards, she's not going to do really well. Or other ones such as like your Halloween Ray, in which she does get a little bit of use in CB, but not exactly enough to warrant pulling her. Again, the ones to look out for are your Inori with the UE, your Yori with the UE, as well as your Rin Ranger with the UE. Some people would play with Mahiru, without the Yuhi and use her in PvP. And to that, I say, man, more power to you because when it comes to creative comps, I can't beat them. <laughs> I'm a meta slave. But my guys, with that being said, that is going to round out this bad boy over here. I am going to drop the link to this image. I will export it as an image and you guys can go grab it in the description below. But otherwise, man, uh it good. It's good. Uh, it feels good making a pre-con video. I hope you guys didn't miss me too much. For some of you players who do like looking ahead and doing your own research, do let me know if you disagree with any of this. But otherwise, let me know if you did find it helpful down in the comments below. And my guys, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell. But uh, but as your girl, a Princess Kokoro once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.